Hello everyone and welcome down to episode number 27 of the Down South Photo Show. Uh, 27 episodes, we're chugging along nicely. Uh, before I introduce us, I would like to say a big thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, followed, commented, had input into the show. Uh, we love getting your feedback uh, really enjoy seeing your messages that are coming in. So thank you so much for all your help and assistance so far. Also, if you're listening to this on Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a little five-star review. Of course, it's going to be a five-star review. Wouldn't be anything else, would it, Cam? Um, uh, so there was, feel free. There was a one. There, there, was, there was a one-star review there. Was there? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I don't know. I don't know who it was, but well, um, five-star reviews help us spread the podcast far and wide. So if you would like to do that, that would be wonderful. My name's Brendan Waits. I am here in Ocean Grove in sunny Victoria, and over there on the other screen is Cam Blake down in sunny Tasmania. Good evening, Cameron. G'day, Brendan. That is by far the best intro you've ever done. That was, was incredible. It? Was it? Yeah, yeah you've, okay. you've, you've, you've plugged this. You've only, not only have you named yourself, but you've also plugged social media, Spotify, mm-hmm. podcasts, mm-hmm. Uh, everything, five star yeah. rating. You've done it yeah. all. And we're, we're 45 seconds in, and that's yeah. the end of the show. It doesn't get any so, better than so, that. Yeah, so that's it. We're done. Thanks for coming. Mm. Um, so clearly clearly you're over COVID then, because you're functioning properly. I am over the COVID. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I'm at about 98% recovered. Um, the only sort yeah. of lingering symptoms are propensity for a little headache late in the day and scratchy throat still, but not bad. Like, it just feels like it's and, a bit of, bit of and scarring. Crapping on, crapping on in the intro. And crapping on with intros. Apparently, if you run a podcast and you do crappy long intros, you've got COVID. So just be aware yeah. of that. Um, but interesting, interesting though. Um, so not two hours ago, I, I'm sorry, three hours ago, I had my booster jab. So right. I not only do I now have three doses of vaccine in me, I also got the thing. So I think my antigen levels are like so off the charts. Three- so three doses of the vaccine, and you've had COVID. Yes, you're 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 practically Superman, aren't you? Well, I, I I'm a bit worried that I might wake up in the morning and look like the Incredible Hulk. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope Sally, I hope Sally's not there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, and I, I'm not even angry. Like I'm just green and big, just gr- green, <laughs> big and bold. Yeah, well, but it, it's good. It's good that you're back to functioning. That's awesome. Yeah, no, the wife uh, would prefer Hawkeye, but that's another story. Um, from Ma- yeah, from no, Mash. it is good. Hawk, yes, Hawkeye Hawk from, from Mash. Mash. That's right. She's a, that's right. She's an Alan Alder fan, is she? Yes, that's right. Hawkeye from Mash. Exactly. No. Oh. Um, oh, we. <laughs> I, I'm I'm starting with my background today for yeah, the yeah, for, for the people driving cars and with us on their stereos or in their headphones and can't see us. I've got a nice little sunset here. Uh, this is a a. Um, a lake that is literally three doors down from my house. Like it's just there. Um, yeah. Back when we first built here, I used to be able to hit golf balls into that lake from my yeah. backyard. And I reckon Cam might have done the same thing at one I, point. I, I do believe after one of your golf classic days, we might have had a few drinks and gone down and had a longest drive competition from the edge of the lake. That sounds um, about right. And that it's not a very big right. lake. It's not a very wide lake. No, no. Uh, you couldn't do that now because it's literally in the middle of suburbia. But... Yeah. Reason I'm reason I'm banging on about it is because we had a cracking sunset uh, between Christmas and New Year, and really the only chance I had to go out and photograph it was to literally run barefoot <laughs> down to that lake, take a couple yeah. of shots. So it was nice, and I was they're just looking. They are iPhone shots, surely. No, no, that's done with. Oh, that's an iPhone. It is clearly <laughs> clearly it's an iPhone. Did you 100%. adjust the polarizer on the front? Yeah, and and it, and it made a camera sound. So that's a camera, right? Oh, you mean like this camera sound? Oh, not again! People, We're people will people, people get people drive off they the get, road. People get very excited when we do a shutter. They do. They? they do love the shutter. Now, um, yep. I'm going to hazard a guess that that's Cradle Mountain Lodge behind you. You are correct, sir. That is the Cradle Mountain Lodge. Uh, I was up there over the weekend. Um, got asked to go up and do some photos for the lodge management. Um, so got to stay up there a night and took the family with us and kids and had a few walks around the little park there and. Um, yeah, it was only there for a night, but just had to try and get some new shots for him in regards to uh, the front porch on the or the front veranda at the lodge is new. So Very they wanted nice. some update, updated shots, and then I was meant to do do some further shots inside of the wine cellar, which I've done, and a few other places. But uh, I'll have to go back up there. We ran out of time, so uh, so yeah, this is uh, Sunday morning, just gone, 
and it was a stunning start. It was really not a cloud in the sky Beautiful. and a little bit of fog and mist coming off the little pond there, which helped. And uh, yeah, it was good. It was really nice. Beautiful um, spot. So what camera equipment did you use to take that photo? Uh, that was with the Leica, uh, mm-hmm. the Leica M10R, and it was a Ooh, 21mm lens, I think it was, or a oh, 35 nice. might, Actually, it might be a 35mm lens. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it was really nice. Um, and we had a little bit of colour in the sky, oh, the other side there, a little bit of colour in the sky, like a bit of a reverse sunrise, which was nice. So, um, well, off to the side, it was a bit nice bit of colour off to the side. So, yeah, it was good. And um, I've sent it through to them, and they're happy with what they've seen, the other the other examples I've done. So, all good. But, yeah, it was just nice to get up there. Cradle, Cradle's a beautiful spot. doesn't matter how many times you go up yeah. there. Yeah, uh, you can see behind on that side all the wildflowers are in bloom, and it's a really nice time to get up there. If, you, if you're a bit of an avid walker, it's probably the, one of the best times to get up there because the weather's generally better. The wildflowers are out, out; you get plenty of daylight to go do some walks, and yeah, it's a stunning place. Lovely, very, very yeah. good. And um, for those playing along at home, when you use the term "reverse sunset" or "sun" or "reverse sunrise," what do you mean sun, by that? Yeah, sometimes if you're taking shots of, for example, sunrise or sunset, if you look the other way back to the other horizon uh sometimes you get a little like reverse color so even though the sun might be setting in front of you pushing off you know oranges and reds and all those kind of nice colors it might be more of a a bluey purpley color behind you so sometimes uh, you'll find that the color behind you is just as good as the color in front of you so we always call them a reverse sunrise or reverse sunset because it's sort of happening in reverse it reflects the light to the other um other horizon so Keep an eye for that. Don't just shoot one way, as we always say. Make sure you turn around. Yeah, yeah. So it's more, you. more so that you know the sun rises in the east. So as the sun's rising, don't forget to look west because yeah. you'll get that look. Now, yeah. uh, this is not scripted, but because we were, we were we crap at doing the notes this week, but I wanted to actually mention something while we're on this topic: um, the difference between golden hour and blue hour. Um, mm. which we may have already brushed over once before on the pod, but um, it's a really fascinating time to take photos, in my opinion, because uh, it's when, I mean, we all everyone bangs on about golden hour and salivates about golden hour and how good it is, and it is good. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's yeah. when the, it's normally when the contrasts are really contrasty and you've got, um, you know, uh, really, really nice light when the sun's very low. Uh, and the reason you get a sort of a gold or a, or, or a yellowy, orangey glow is because the sun, the sunlight is literally coming through uh, a lot more atmosphere. So mm-hmm. you don't get as many, um, Blues and greens. It's more your reds and oranges and yellows. We can go. So, we can. We, we can go even deeper with that if you like, and yes. talk about wavelengths and why longer wavelengths are reds and shorter wavelengths are blue. Yeah. But we won't crap on yeah. about science or anything. We could. Like we can. We could do a little bit of physics one hundred and one, but we won't because nah, nah, that's um, lose listeners. The other because on the other <laughs> side of the coin. Um, Beyond golden, it's not like you have golden hour, which could be forty five minutes. It could be two hours. And then it ends, and then you go, oh, that's over, let's go home. Yeah, because right. <laughs> Because then what happens is you get this awesome thing called blue hour, which uh, yeah. happens the hour before sunrise and the hour before after sunset, um, yeah. and sometimes even a lot longer than that, particularly in the southern hemisphere. Uh, yeah. P.S., I did mention to you that we do have now some northern hemisphere listeners. So we do. We have welcome people from to the them. other side of the planet listening. We that's do. Amazing. We- which is pretty cool. Um, but anyway, nice. for for you guys, I know your days are quite short and it'll all swip around, swap around soon. But for us at the moment, and particularly you, Cam, being down south, mm. as far down south as you are, you get those really long days. But the yeah, blue hour would tend to linger. And I mean, yeah, more commonly probably known as twilight. But generally speaking, you get a blue... A, a deep blue color cast to your photos yeah. after the sun goes down. And this is because you're standing in shadow. And in this case, you are in the shadow of the earth um, yeah. because the sun which is, has gone which down. Which is pretty cool, when, pretty cool when you think about it, that you're actually standing in the shadow of the yeah. planet you're standing on. Yeah, yeah. It it's is really crazy. cool. If you think about it too long, we'll do your head in. Um, yeah. fun, <laughs> fun fact, and I want you all to try this. Next time you're out shooting the sunset and you've got a clean look at the sun as it dips below the horizon, so a flat horizon or it goes over yep. the ocean or something like that, um, yeah. what I want you to do is just before the sun disappears, like literally when it's on that last bit that we all like to see it just disappearing, lay down on the beach, lay down or whatever. As soon as it disappears, jump up again and you'll see it set again. <laughs> <Are you serious? laughs> I am dead serious. Right. Does that yep. happen with 
even with the earth being flat or uh so, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. what are you <laughs> no, did you you haven't obviously haven't had the covid vaccine yet you? no i haven't had the covid no i haven't had the covid vaccine i haven't had any nothing working for me uh, but, yeah. you, but you are you are right in in regards to blue blue hour like oh, okay. down here in tassie like we have blue hour like sun sets at i think it's going to set here in about 30 minutes but it hangs on for like an hour afterwards. So hmm. we get blue hour. We literally get a blue hour, if not longer. It's, it's really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. And you get, it's it's a different look. Um, the color, uh, the color, the contrast is flattened. So there's, yeah. uh, everything becomes a lot flatter. Everything becomes, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a it's a cool light, obviously. It's a, it's a lot cooler. It's the, the bluer tones. Uh, yeah. It can be really effective, particularly if you've got, for example, the building behind you can, like if the lights yeah. are on inside that building, uh, yeah. to throw you know a new bit of color into it not just blue across the board that can be really cool yeah. but also yeah. the atmosphere uh, above uh, the your scene can quite often be changing color as well and giving you great yeah. contrast it give, it gives you um and this shot behind me which actually I was there about an hour before sunrise and and you get you get that beautiful gradient that you're talking about it's like a it's like a soft grad it actually yeah. the color gradiates through the color um, channels or the color um, pigments so you get that beautiful sort of dark blue into light blue into purple or sometimes it's the other way around um, but yeah blue hours are a really cool time to shoot and it's um, I actually find it probably a better time to shoot I find if you especially if you're shooting sunset you know and you're shooting towards the sun or out that sort of direction it gets really really contrasty like you said your dynamic range just goes crazy but yeah if you're shooting 90 degrees to the sun uh, that's not too bad but when that sun drops down you know that first 20 minutes after that is magic it really is magic hour it's a lovely time to shoot yeah. um and i must admit i noticed i've noticed it a lot in the last couple of years that really like like that golden hour you're talking about it, it is uh, like as soon as it gets about on an hour before sunset the light just changes everything just changes gets a bit softer the color the warmth and all that kind of stuff so keep an eye out for it like a lot of people go out to places and again you know people go to places at lunchtime and expect to get you know beautiful shots but if you plan your shots and you plan your locations just before sunset and give yourself a bit of time, like you said, don't just pack up the car when the sun drops, you know, jump off the beach, watch it set again, mm. and then and then keep going with your camera and, I, and look for other things. I sense some cynicism. You don't believe me that that works. I don't I don't know if lying on the beach and you, then watching the sunset. You have to be, you have to be, twice. you have to be taller than four foot six. I think. <laughs> I'm four. I'm four foot seven, Brendan. That's Sorry, I have to tell you. Uh, it's um, true. Think, it does I work. Think, and I and if you want to, COVID voodoo stuff. No, no. And if you want to um, see, if you're lucky enough to be in a place like Dubai, they actually have this thing where you can watch the sun set, get in an express elevator, go to the top of the Burj Khalifa, and watch it set all over again. That's true. That 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 I can buy. I, yeah. I can. I can no, no. You can do it. You can do it from six foot tall. It's true. I've done it, and it works. All right, so for all our listeners out there, the next time you're at a beach and the sun's setting, you want people to all lie down, yes. watch the sun drop, yes. and then jump up, and then watch well, it drop again. Watch the last bit of the sun disappear, and then just as soon as it disappears, stand up, and you will see it disappear again. That, that That's some kind of Einstein theory there. Like, that's stopping time and going back, isn't it? Well, feels like it, but yeah. you do. If you do it enough, you actually, you're like Benjamin Button. You get younger. What? Welcome to the Down South Science Show. <laughs> we, we have gone a little bit off yeah, track. Well, that's but, not unusual because we don't that's fine. anything. Now, um, tonight's show is being filmed before a live studio audience. Um, Cameron has <laughs> someone studio. over it. A live uh, studio audience. Has, has someone audience. in the background. Uh, now, she? she's, she's, she, 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 she's, she, you can just see it. Oh, she's, oh, no, she's, yeah, yeah. She's, she's getting sneaky. <laughs> uh, so I, I do, I'm, I'm recording in front of a live studio audience, which is ridiculous. Um, so I've have I have Erin behind me. Erin's an avid listener. She's been there from day one. She she is the fan girl of the show. Right. To be honest, to be honest, friends, I don't think she's actually listened to any episodes, but oh. we won't say it in front of her. I don't know why. I don't know. Like she's a really good photographer. She's an Olympus user. Um, she loves going out hiking, which is where we're going. Uh, and yet she doesn't listen to the show. Does Erin so, have an Instagram? Erin does have an Instagram. Let's have a look. Okay, we're we are going oh, to stay tuned. Just give me give me some filler while I look up her. Okay, her, uh... we are going to link Aaron's Instagram account so everyone can it, have a look at it, Aaron's it is, work. It is Aaron Ann Photo E R I N A double N Photo. Aaron Ann Photo. We've got some we beautiful are, shots in there. And we are going so. to 
We're going to get all our uh, listeners to come and check you out, Aaron, and you we are, are going to gain are. some followers. Yeah, you're on 196 followers at the moment. We expect that to at least go into four, so four digits. So let's um, tell the audience, Cam, why Aaron is there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you're off on a great big adventure yes. tomorrow to get some more bloody photos, you lucky bugger. We are. Uh, before I go any further, I'll, I'll just let you know that Aaron's also a Bulldog supporter. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Aaron. This is just... Aaron. <laughs> Poor Aaron. Anyway, yeah, Aaron and I, we are heading off on our hike that we've been talking about. Uh, we originally had a few more people coming with us. Um, Erin broke one of the other people by making her sub into her own basketball team. Then this poor lady did her knee. Good friend, that one. Right. And then we had a couple other people that couldn't come because it just didn't work with their schedule. So Erin and I are heading off tomorrow. We fly out in a light plane out of Cambridge, Hobart Airport, and we take a, about a 45-minute, one-hour flight uh, southwest into the middle of nowhere. And we land at the Melaleuca Airport, and then we commence an 85-kilometre walk back along the southwest coast to Cockle Creek. So with any luck, we should be home by next Friday. Wow. With all so, not. Well, <laughs> yeah. no, let's not even make light of that. I'm sure it's no. a very, uh, it sounds like a very serious place to be going, a very, very off-grid yeah. It is completely off the grid. Uh, we have packed, and oh, I've repacked my bag about 600 times. Erin's had a good laugh at me today, repacking and taking things out and dropping weight down and changing backpacks and all that kind of jazz. But we're all ready. We've got all our food, got all our camping gear, got uh, all our safety stuff, first aid, you know, the little GPS things I showed last episode. Yep. Uh, cam- cameras are at the ready. Batteries are all charged. Uh, we're all ready to go. The weather outlook looks like for anything that we can get down in southwest, it looks in incredibly good good uh so we should be fine for weather the whole way uh and yeah we take off we'll land tomorrow uh we land about three o'clock three thirty at the airstrip we haven't decided yet if we'll take off straight away or wait the next morning and take off you can camp there as well so uh yeah but we're on our way so we'll be off the grid uh until yeah around about thursday friday next week brilliant this is very very mm. cool very very exciting i'm excited for you yeah, um, yeah, it should be good. I, and this is probably one of the last walks in Tassie I haven't attempted to do. So great, um, tick that off the list. And uh, it's spectacular scenery all along that southwest coast. And um, bit apparently there's a bit of mud on the track at the moment, and not as much water as we probably hoped for. But we'll we'll make do and um, we'll get through. No, very very good. And um, mm. so, is it really uh, you're going out there to get photos, or are you just going to do the walk, or is it? Uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a a combination I think um, yeah. definitely definitely get photos I've both got like camera gear charged up and ready to go and even taking a tripod which is doing my head in because I, I'm like do I take it do I not take it I need a tripod don't need a tripod but I'm taking it um, because I know as soon as I don't take it there'll be something that I need a tripod to take like a, a massive aurora off the coast or something like that or correct um, so and, and the fact is the challenge of doing these walks it's a little bit harder than the overland track walk a little bit further it's like an extra day or two um and very remote, but yeah, beautiful beach scenery, beautiful mountain scenery, uh, plenty of wildlife and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it should be should be pretty cool. Well, you guys have fun and take care out there, and that sounds like an absolute blast. It'll give us some, plenty to talk about. I would say in the first week of February when we get you back. Yeah, we can, yeah. If, um, if as, l- as long as Erin can put up with me for eight, seven or eight days after I've just put her out there as a bulldog supporter and just shamed her Instagram account oh, well, the whole thing no, I might no. not make it back who no, knows she, her, her stuff is about to blow up I know I'm sure her phone will be blowing up when this goes out on Friday but we won't be here to know so she'll come back from the trip and they might yeah. have, she'll be oh. might be an influencer by oh, then. she'll have she'll have literally extra you know what's uses. gonna you know what's gonna happen I can I can see it now we're gonna start going and after Friday sort of about Saturday Sunday she's gonna start doing these funny poses on the edge of rivers and yeah. on the beaches she yep. I, I, saw, I saw her pack a red jacket before as well yeah, yeah. she's gonna start real. taking photo yeah she's gonna do all that kind of weird stuff uh, which brings <laughs> which is a very nice segue into uh, well, what we were it? talking about last week which was uh, our uh, hashtag not another effing sunrise have we had people uh, 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 I have, drop, I have, dropping uh, a few images for us cam I think I think we've had a few. Um, I haven't, I haven't looked them, but uh, okay. Thanks for thanks for throwing me that under the bus. No, we that's all right. Questions uh, without we notice. Did, we, yeah, questions without notice. Because right, so what brilliant. I'm what I'm actually going to do, uh, Cam doesn't know this, but what I'm going to do right now is put up on the screen the best uh, one that we've had so far, and there it is. Look at that. 
That's Lovely awesome. Shot. We have yeah. no idea who uh, took it, but we're going to put your name on the screen and uh, we'll put yeah. your name in the show notes at the end because uh, yeah. we there, haven't there decided was, it yet. There was a nice couple there. Um, there was one from a lady I know, uh, Minette, uh, Min, as we call her. Um, that was uh, a a little while back, that was a Bridgewater Bridge. That was lovely, but yeah, there is a few there. Okay, so great. While, All right, we're gonna while, we're gonna pick while, the best one. Away you can, yeah. Whilst I'm away, you can pick the best one. And, I will and put them up there. I'm yeah. gonna put it into the uh, into the pod. Uh, our while, main while, yes, go ahead. I was gonna say whilst I'm away, whilst I'm away, I'll come up with February challenge. Oh, I like it. Aaron and I will have a chat, um, and yeah. we'll come up with an idea of what the next February challenge should be. Yeah. Okay. Take notes. You should be able to tick off the whole twelve months. Really, you got plenty we of time. All right, we'll get we'll get all the whole year sorted out every month. <laughs> thank you, and thank you, Aaron. Not another effing red jacket. Yeah, I, I already feel like I'm being replaced by Aaron. No, that's no fine. one can replace. No one can replace you, Aaron. Yeah, well, that's Especially not true. Not no. That's not true. That is not true. Yeah. Uh, so our yeah. main topic we wanted to now look. We're not going to have a huge, big, long podcast tonight. Cam's got places to be and things to go. No, that didn't work. But he's got it. He's got stuff happening. So things, um, things to do and people, people to kill. That's it. Our main topic for tonight. I wanted to talk a little bit about kit lenses. Now, kit lenses, Brendan. What the hell are you talking about? Well, what, kit lenses. What the hell are you talking about, Brendan? Kit lenses. Um, so basically, if you want to purchase yourself a new camera, uh, particularly an SLR or a mirrorless style camera, uh, it's going to need to have a lens on the front of it. Now, generally speaking, these manufacturers. Uh, want you to be able to take the camera out of the box and start using it straight away. And yeah. generally what they will do is they will sell you a lens in the box or in the kit, hence the yeah. phrase, a kit lens. Now, generally speaking, these lenses, they ain't great. Let's be honest. They're normally, um, they're made plastic. to a price. They're uh, very, very fantastic. lightweight. They're very plastic. Um, there's probably yeah. less glass elements in them and more plastic elements in them. Um, However, having said all that, I had a, a young gentleman in my store yesterday, uh, all of 15 years of age, got himself a Canon uh, 4000D, I think it was, for Christmas. Um, that he, we're, that, not sponsored. we're not sponsored by Canon. That he, uh, that, that he paid, I think, half of or something like that. And he got what he could afford, and he got a Canon 4000D. And he got it with an 18-55 to 55 kit lens, which is, yeah. you know, f far from Canon's best lens. In fact, it would be yeah. their worst lens, probably. That's, that's Having said that, though, he showed me some of the photos out of this camera that he's done, and they were fantastic. Um, yeah. I guess it's it's a the point being, at least you're taking photos. All right? It's a starting yeah. point. It's not that's like right. you're shooting through a potato. You are shooting through something that's quite, it's okay. It will do the job. But the analogy I like to make, it's like going to buy a Ferrari and then putting Tirana hub hubcaps on it, um, you know, or or, yeah. or or running it on you know normal unleaded petrol rather than yeah. putting the high octane new butte, you know, yeah. that just totally gives away that I'm not a petrol head. Yeah, whatever. The nine, the nine, the nine, ninety eight. Uh, Thank you. Op, yeah, ninety eight. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. High octane fuel or whatever it's called. So. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean the kit lenses are terrible. At least they get you using your gear. So, which of course begs the question, should you buy a camera body only and then and just skip the kit lens altogether? And, yeah. and the general answer to that is do what you can afford to get yourself up and running with this gear. So yeah, that's right. um, I, I just we, find we, you, get, you, get, you can still use the camera. You still get yeah. good results. And if I took a photo at 18 mil on his lens and then I went and got a 18 mil F2.8 all singing, all dancing, $2,000 lens and took the yeah. same photo and showed them to you on a computer screen or on a phone screen, could you tell. hand on heart tell me which camera, which lens took which photo? And the answer is no, probably not. Probably, probably not. And that's that's the thing. And again, I, I see it time and time again. People with lots and lots and lots of expensive gear. Um, I, I find I, I see people probably from the other side of things where people go out and buy a new camera and they like I've never I've never shot a DSLR before. I'm just getting the photography. I need a, a Nikon D800 D850. And I need a 24 to 70 2.8, six thousand dollar lens and the whole lot. And they get there, and I, I use the analogy that you, you said, you know, the Ferrari with the Tirana hubcaps. I say it's like having a Ferrari and driving it in first gear only, because like there's no point if you don't know how to use that camera or don't understand 
what the camera's trying to do or, or the, the apertures and the shutter speed and all that kind of stuff, then you may as well be shooting with a kit lens because you're not going to get the best out of that lens. Yes. And having said that, I know you and I, you know, when we used to work at Camera House, it was always, we always used to tell customers, if you're going to put money into something, put it into the lens. Invest in glass is what we used to say. Yeah. Um, but again, having said that, the kit lenses serve a purpose and they do a pretty good job these days. I think, I think the kit lenses are a little bit better than what they used to be. They used to be shite years ago, but now I think they're a lot, probably a bit, you know, better manufactured and slightly yeah. better quality. But again, if you're shooting, you know, you're starting out photography and you're shooting on kit lens versus a four thousand dollar lens, if you're yeah. putting it on a computer screen or you're putting it on Instagram or social media, then you're not going to know the difference anyway. No, no, that's right. So um, yeah, no, I I, I agree. It's. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I, 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 the reason I get people to steer a little bit away from the kit lenses is normally because their lowest aperture value is only f three point five. Um, again, because they're made yeah. to a price point, and it's not out of the realms of most budgets to be able to get yourself uh, an f two point eight lens, be that a seventeen to uh, no, sorry, yeah, a seventeen to thirty five or whatever the Canon make. Yeah. Just just talking about Canon, for example, because that's what this kid brought in. You know, you can get um, yeah. a half decent f two point. Now, the other thing is, it doesn't have to be a Canon lens either. Tamron, Sigma, these yeah. guys, they they make aftermarket lenses. You can get good entry level uh, twenty four to seventy f two point eight lenses for under a thousand dollars. And yeah. that extra stop of light down to f two point eight, I think, is where it really comes into it, where, where particularly for yeah. landscape, um, you know, yeah. where, where you might just, it might be the difference between getting a clean shot and not if you don't, if, if you can't stop it down, if you can't get yourself down to f2.8. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing as well, is like when you start putting money into lenses, what, what are you actually getting? And I don't think a lot of people know what they're actually getting for their money. So a lot yeah. of people go, well, you know, I can buy a kit lens for a couple hundred bucks or I can buy a, a pro lens for a few thousand dollars. What what's the difference? What am I getting? And what what you said exactly right is you're getting a, a, what they call a faster lens because it has a wider aperture or more of a wider constant aperture. So instead of being you know 18 to 55 where you can only shoot 5.6 at 55 mil, you know with a 2.8 lens you can shoot 2.8 at any focal length, which means like you said you know low light conditions you get beautiful soft depth of field. You generally get better coatings on the lenses, better glass and or actual glass, not plastic and lens um, some of the newer lenses also have image stabilizers built in yep. uh, they have different sort of uh, materials you know proper proper metal barrels versus more plastic barrels so yeah a lot of people don't actually know what they're getting for their dollar when they're buying better lenses and just go with what they think you know what what they think they should get not really what they need to get yeah yeah, and generally speaking, the difference between high quality glass lenses with special coatings that absorb light rather than reflect, just like you've just said, um, quite mm. often it's this the case of edge to edge sharpness, and particularly in the corners as well. Yeah. But but again, you know, like people who are starting out are just that they're beginners. I mean, they're you know, there's no yeah. need to go all out and buy all the the high end gear when when you can use the kit lenses. Just get just ring the most out of them as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, Sure, occasionally at ultra wide angle. So if you're shooting at 18 mil, so Canon's 18 to 55, for example, on a crop sensored camera, it makes it about a 24 mil lens. Yeah. Um, you know, at its absolute yeah. widest, and let's say you're shooting at an aperture of f4, which is probably the sweet spot for that lens. Yeah, you might see a tiny bit of fall off in the corners, but no one else is going to see it, and no one else is going to yeah, even right. know or notice it. No. Um, but that's there right. is a, there is a, a standard of uh, of image that is expected, I guess, from professionals or people who start making money from their lenses, where or from their from their ph photographic gear, uh, where a certain level of sharpness yeah. is expected. But again, it's only photographers who nitpick it and see that stuff. That's um, right. You know, and, and, and having having said that as well, if you you buy a crappy little kit lens and you try and do a nice, you know, say you go shoot a wedding and you want to get that nice bokeh and soft focus in the background. You can't really get that as well out of a kit lens as you might out of a professional lens. But there's nothing to stop you then editing um, your images and softening the background. Like you can actually make it work and make it look more professional. What what I find a lot in my workshops, and it's funny that you sort of brought this topic up, is that a lot of, I find that people who come on my workshops who have gone out and bought really expensive gear 
versus the people that might have been given a, a camera by you know Uncle Bob or you know left a camera or bought a second hand cheap camera. The disappointment out of the people that have the more higher end camera gear that they're not getting the quality of shots they expect to get versus the people that have just got more of an entry level camera. It's poles apart. The people that have got the big expensive gear get frustrated easier get frustrated quicker with what their gear is not producing because they think the gear is going to do it all for them. Yeah. Where the people that have got the cheap cameras, they generally go, oh, yeah, well, it's just a keep cheap camera, so I'm just learning and I'm just trying it out first. And, you know, there's a, there's an expectation level that gets yeah. put out yeah. there. and That's right. Yeah. And you can't buy experience. That That's what that comes yeah, down you can't. to. Yeah, no. And, and right. um, as luck would have it, I just happen to have a little... Can do we need I, to apologize? Can we need to apologise to our viewers? Do, our, do we need to apologise to our viewers because they saw your legs when you got up in the shorts? Ah, uh, see, they didn't because yeah. I flicked it over to uh, speak of you. Oh, did you? So oh, I well, did. Well, uh, that's see how clever yes. I'm getting now. I'm getting all the all the tricks and tips. You're, um, you're editing on the fly. It's incredible. And and what I did notice as well is Metal just mount, just mount. how plastic these things really are. I mean, that's a that's a plastic mount on the back of this yeah. lens, which basically means. Ah, look, if you if you drop a camera, it's going to break anyway most of the time. But this doesn't stand a bloody chance. Like that's just going to snap no. the mount off, and and it's yeah. had it. Um, but one yeah. upshot with these little lenses is how lightweight they actually are. So if you do want to travel that's right. light, and um, you know you don't mind sacrificing a tiny bit of image quality, um, yeah. and it's yeah, no, they're they're good and and cheap, really cheap. I've seen these yeah. online for eighty five bucks. So yeah. cheap to replace. So I, I think. I, I think, yeah, I, I think it's a good topic to talk about. And I think there, there's probably a bit more in depth we can go again in another episode about, you know, what you should be looking for in a lens versus what you're shooting with landscape stuff. And, um, you know, wide angle, you know, what aperture do you need? You know, yeah. do you need a certain this, certain that? Um, because there is a lot of lenses out there. There's a hell of a lot of choice for Canon, Nikons, yeah. Olympus, Sony's, the whole lot. Um, and I don't think people really... You know, I think I think people like the idea of studying up the specs, but maybe not really understanding what the specs are all about. And I know as soon as you go into a camera store, the guy selling you the lens is going to say, "Oh, you need this one, and you need that one," and you know, all of a sudden you're buying lenses that you don't really need. So yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a good topic. And I think yeah, your, your young bloke who came into the shop, he, he's probably proof that it doesn't matter what lens you have, if you use if you're using the camera correctly and you've got the eye for it, then you can get good results out of anything. Absolutely, and and yeah, it's to be encouraged, and I think it's pretty amazing, actually. I mean, the um, without looking it up, but I think that the the four thousand D from Canon, it's a great little camera, um, and I yeah. think it's like seven hundred bucks uh, with a lens. So oh, you know that that's boy. for a brand new, full blown digital SLR. Um, yeah, and it's true that Canon are scaling back very, very, very heavily their digital SLR. A lineup. Um, they're going more for mirrorless now. You know, mirrorless is yeah. great. It really is. It's a great system. It's small. It's lightweight. It's gen. You can get full frame mirrorless cameras that are quite small. Uh, yeah. They're bloody expensive, man. Like they're yeah. you they know are, for, yeah. for for what you get for an entry. You know, and 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 I'd, I'd hazard a guess to say a lot of our listeners are entry level to sort of getting to like an intermediate. Yeah, you know, they're they're they're, yeah. uh, they're enthusiasts. Um, yeah. But there's no there's no real need to, to to go nuts with your gear when you're at that level. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I I can't I still to this day cannot get over the amount of money that people put into camera systems. Who you know like you know I don't want to say that we're different to anyone else, but we you know we work in that field and that's they're the tools of our trade that we use. Yeah. But you know people that are just starting out and just you know just want to get going into photography, the amount of money that you see spent on initial camera gear. Like, I, like, you know, the first camera I had was a K1000, like, you know, that classic camera. And then I went to an EOS 600, 650 or something like that and then had an EOS 50 and then got into the Olympus digital system and stuff like that. Like, to me, it was a whole progress. But you see so many people out there just go straight to the top shelf and go, I want that and that and that. Yeah. And, and yeah, put on the credit yeah. card and thanks thanks for coming. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, which is which is all fine and good. And I, I suppose in some ways they're going to grow into that equipment. And well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully it doesn't just end up in a cupboard and yeah. gathering dust because they got too frustrated. I, um, I, I but reckon yeah, a few do. Yeah, it's that classic thing where you just cannot buy the experience. And you know, yeah. I always say this is instead of instead of putting pumping money into gear, pump money into your experiences. You know, go and do yeah. the overland track. Go, you know, travel somewhere. You know, now that things are opening up. Yeah. Are they opening up? Well, you know, in Australia at least. And oh, 
Spe- speaking of opening up, here's, here's a nice one for you. You want to come to Tassie? Just come. As long as you're vaccinated, that's it. No, right. no test, no nothing. Right. Rock on up. Right. And if you're unvaccinated, if you're unvaccinated, just just do a thing beforehand saying you're coming. <laughs> we we are we are 100 percent open for business. It's, there it's you go. Aaron came down two days ago and had to do tests and do all the hoops yep. and jump through the hoops. Yeah. The next day, no, you can come down. It's all changed. So right. all you need to do, if you're vaccinated, you just come down like normal. So it's like I'm crossing from Victoria into New South Wales. It's the same into Tassie. Yep, exactly. Right. Yep. Well, yep. that's. So, there you go, folks. Get yourself down to Tasmania and take some bloody photos instead of spending well, money got, on all these. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got workshops galore. I had a little whiteboard behind me. Got workshops galore this year. Come on down, folks. We are open for business. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you've got any questions or comments about kit lenses, please uh, leave those below for us. We're always interested to hear your feedback on that sort of stuff. Um, uh, just the last thing I'll say about kit lenses is you can quite often buy these cameras in what's called a twin lens kit, yeah. where you get an 18 to 55 like this, and then you get like a 55 to 300 millimeter yeah, zoom. 300, 200, yeah, yeah, and if you think this lens is bad, you should see that zoom. <laughs> I, but but I must admit though I, the whole kit lens idea I don't mind because it covers the entire focal range so it really I think you know you buy that 18 to 55 or you know the standard kit lens yeah and you're really you're quite limited you know yeah. for landscapes not so much landscapes you've probably got a bit more play but if you're buying it to do a bit of all round stuff the, the twin lens kit's a really good way to get into it I reckon yeah and I just want to throw back to something I said earlier about getting um, lenses that have got lower aperture values and generally speaking that's going to be better for your portrait work so for wedding yeah. photographers and portrait to get shallow depth of field generally with landscape yeah. photography generally and I am generalizing generally with landscape photography we're going to shoot at higher aperture values to get more in focus so a greater depth of field in our shot um, but having yeah. said that having um, you know, lenses, particularly zoom lenses that are like f4 or f, you know, 3.5, 2.8, particularly zoom lenses. Um, I've seen yeah. some really cool examples lately of using really shallow depth of field in landscape photos. Um, they're yeah. the kind of yeah. they're the kind of scroll stopping photos that you see on Instagram where they, you know, they've got that yeah. beautiful shallow depth of field, and you've got, for example, um, Ash Hughes, a g'day Ash, I know you're listening, um, posted last week a, a great photo of the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse, which was just the top of the yeah. lighthouse. But it had trees either Shooting side. Foliage. Yeah. yeah, and it was yeah. really cool. It had that shallow depth of field, and the foliage in the foreground was completely blown out. But you could tell what what it was, yeah. and it just it was quite a striking image. Yeah, I, I, that's something I touch on a lot in workshops as well. Is is a lot of people think that the shallow depth of field effect should only happen for the foreground topic, hmm. but you can you can put it, you can put that focus point anywhere, and that's where your depth of field will start from. Yeah. So exactly that beautiful photo that Ash did. Exactly that. If you shoot through foliage but have something on the other side of the foliage in focus, then you get this beautiful array of patterns or colours or whatever it might be in the foreground. So don't don't be afraid to shoot things in the in the distance at shallow depth of field, but just make sure you've got something that's blurring out in the foreground uh, to help frame it up, which is what Ash did really well. Absolutely. And um, while we're on the topic of shout-outs, I'd like to give a very, very quick shout-out to another local Ocean Grove photographer, Pete James. Uh, who is prolific in this area, and I haven't spoken about him b- before on the podcast, I don't think, but, man, he's putting out some amazing work. Like, leaves anything I do for dead. Like, he's he's a very, very dedicated photographer. So, Pete James, um, hello to you. Instagram, and we are, what's, what's, what, do you know what his Instagram? Oh, that's Instagram a good question. Be Pete, Pete James Photo, I think it is. Um, but he's definitely on Facebook under Pete James Photo um, and or yeah. Ocean, you know, under Ocean Grove or something like that. But... Uh, I'm going to put yeah, a little... Yeah, he is uh, Pete James. Yeah, Pete yeah. James photo, Pete, Pete James photos. Very, very talented, stuff. local, hard-working local photographer. And um, yeah. it's not by design that I haven't mentioned him before. It's just uh, just occurred to me that uh, he yeah. deserves a shout-out because he does some great stuff. Yeah. He's got some um, beautiful stuff. He has, oh, that's yeah. A cracker. That, yeah. That one of the, the beach and the sun rays and the water. Yes. I think he, he, that. that's the, a the guy knows his way around a camera, that's for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Awesome stuff. The segment that we know and love, Dear Cam, it's back for another week. Give it up. You. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dear Cam, hi, guys. I have a question for Dear Cam. Are ND filters essential for landscape photos? I'm going on a holiday and want to minimize my gear. Cam, this is, a, this is an interesting one. Um, essential is a, a very, very strong word. So... Uh, well, this is, this is the Dear Cam, not yeah. the Dear Brendan segment, so over to you. 
<laughs> well, you might do better than I do. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've never, I've never personally been a huge ND filter user. Um, I, it depends on what you're trying to photograph and where you might be going. So I think that question would depend on, you know, are you going to do lots of coastal shots on your trip? Or are you, you know, are you doing Outback Australia where you want to maybe sort of blur some clouds out of things like that? But um, I've never been a huge user of any filters because I find that if you're shooting at the blue hours and golden hours that we spoke about earlier in the episode, you find that the shutter speeds will slow right down anyway. If you're shooting landscapes at f11 or f16, you'll get a good couple of second exposures going on. But ND filters are very good for, you know, especially if you're going on holidays and you don't have the ability to get to those places at the time that you want to get there. For example, you know, you go to Hopeton Falls or something like that, but you can only get there in the middle of the day. Well, if you want to get that beautiful waterfall effect, then that's where you're going to need an ND filter to help you slow that exposure down. So I would say if you're going on holiday um, and you've got the space in your kit, um, and usually like HD filters are usually sort of, so that's a poor example, but they're only, you know, if you've got the ones that go on the front, they're not that big. Um, so I would say they're not essential but I would say take them if you can fit them in. I think yeah. they're they're so if you if you're, if you're um if you're trimming weight, sure, like what you're about to do, for example, you know, yeah. where, where weight yeah. is really important because you have got to lug that thing for eight days. Yeah, I get that. That's right. But if you're yeah. talking about just holiday and and you know you're going on a plane somewhere and you know, yeah, a filter's yeah, not I, really going to take up that much. No, <laughs> I, I think if you if, if you can if you can get them in there. Um, and it's the same as everything else. It's it's a it's a tool in your kit. So same as you know your, your circular polarizer, so your HD filters, um, certain other things that you put in your, your camera kit. I think if you can take them, and it's not going to cause you issues with weight and stuff like that, then why wouldn't you? you yeah, know? yeah, for sure. Uh, or you know you could get an Olympus Mark Three EM One or OM Systems EM One. They have inbuilt ND filters. I know Erin on this trip, she's taking her Olympus camera as well, and. It's got in inbuilt neutral density filters, so we don't need filters for our trip because they're inbuilt. So that's a bonus. So it's a weight saving uh, purpose. So, Absolutely. but yeah, I, I don't know if they're essential, but if you can put them in, you know, why wouldn't you? Well, um, by the way, people, ND stands for neutral density, and it's basically a filter so that you can. Um, Artificially, if you like, um, stop down the light and make uh, have less light coming to your sensor or through your lens uh, for yep. the purpose of doing long exposure photography in bright conditions. Basically, I mean that's uh, yep. it's it's all about um, being able to get an appropriate shutter speed for the effect you are looking for, and quite often an ND filter can help you do yep. that. So, for those playing along at home yep. and, and they, familiar they come, with what they, an ND filter is, that's what they do. No, and and they come in different. Uh, variants as well or different densities so you can do like a, t a two stop which will have a two stop effect in regards to slowing your shutter speed down by two stops uh, they go up as far as at least 10 stop I think they go further these days so yes. um, my only advice to people with ND filters is just be a little bit careful I find that people who get onto ND filters early in regards to their I guess passion or their, their journey into landscape <coughs> photography if people get onto the understanding of neutral density filters early, sometimes that's all they ever do. And I think they put themselves in a box that every shot they do has to have a 10 stop filter on it and everything has to be wispy and blurry and stuff like that. I, my advice would be, like I said, they should be a tool in your kit, but don't, don't do them to death because you'll find that you, you, you pigeonhole your, your photography a little bit into the fact that it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing, you've got an ND filter that can fix the problem and get the nice effect. Uh, I think that makes you maybe a bit more of a lazy photographer. So that, that's the only bit of advice I'd give on that. Yeah, very, very good. Well answered. If you have a deer cam question, by all means, send it into us via courier pigeon, via Morse code, via text message, via whatever you have at your disposal to get us that message. Please send it in. Probably just put it in the comments below or, you know, at yeah. us. Or you can, what you kid, can is that what kids do these yeah. days? They at us. You can, on the Instagram account, um, the Down South Photo Show Instagram account, yep. uh, we do get a lot of, we get a few messages coming through there. That seems to be a good channel of uh, yep. communication through there okay. as well. So chuck it in there, uh, or you can add us, or you can email us on the email address. Link in description for that one. That's it. That's um, it. So Cam, that's the podcast for this week. Um, I know what you've got coming up this week. You've got a great walk. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, really looking forward to seeing Hopefully. how that goes for you. 
and looking forward to yeah, seeing um, particularly of course the photos because this is the down south photo show and we want to see yeah. some of cam's juicy nice new images um ha- have you got yeah. a photo in mind that you're wanting to get or, or are you just that unfamiliar uh, with the area it's really just a sort of I, have I've, a crack at and I've, see what you come back with yeah it's a bit like that I, i've flown i you can fly into Malaluka and you can fly into this airstrip and do a day trip through one of the companies down here. You go out in a boat and there's a big harbour there. It's, it's stunning scenery. Um, so I sort of know what to expect that's going to happen on, on this trip, but I, I haven't got any images in mind. I, I've, I've consciously tried not to look too much at the images on like you know Google, Google Images or whatever. I want to sort of go there with a fresh set of eyes and, and see what we have. So um, there's a couple of classic sort of spots along the way and I'll try and get my own take on them. But... Yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing stuff I haven't seen before. Like it's, you know, I've done the Overland track a million times and pretty much know every rock and tree on there. This one's a bit more of a different multi-day walk I've never done. So we'll see what happens. But uh, while I'm away, I'm no doubt you'll be running two shops. They're all open now. Is that all good? Yeah, so we're back back into it uh, full on too. Like we uh, because we had to be so patchy with our operating hours due to a lack of staff. Um, this last week has mm. been huge, um, which is great. Very grateful for. Everyone getting prints done and buying equipment from me and all that sort of stuff. That's been outstanding. Film. My goodness. I know this is the third week in a row we've banged on about film, but um, I literally can't keep up with demand for film. We, we are processing heaps of rolls of film. Um, thank you. That's a, for those uh, hey, do, who want to hear it. Do, do you remember Hey Hey It's That Day and they used to do funny photos? Yes. And they used yes. to have that. <laughs> they did. They used to yeah. have that that's when the like when that. the overlay came yeah. on. Yeah, that's right. I remember. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. yeah, so flat out busy, which is great. And look, really a huge thank you to everyone who sent me a message saying, hope I get better soon. I am better soon. That's all behind me now. Um, and, and the irony of all this is I'm about to take a week's holiday myself. So um, next week. Uh, Perfect. Yep, closing the Ocean Grove shop down pretty much completely for a week. And um, oh, just yeah. we're going to put our feet up. We're going to head off to beautiful sunny Port Ferry for a week. Um yeah. Or six days yeah. or something and there will be that's, camera that's equipment well, coming along uh, well i think it's a well-earned break for you and your team that's for sure and yeah. your family yeah no well. it's it's time time to switch off before the madness of back to school and all that stuff kicks in so yeah uh, which all it's happens funny it's funny quickly. it's funny you mentioned funny you mentioned film again i went and i had to go buy a little camera bag for this trip and i left it for the last minute and i went local to get a camera shop here and I was lining up and there was a guy, young bloke, with three rolls of film waiting to check out yep. with his little camera. So, yep. yeah, no, it's, that's all it's, happening. It's back it's, in a very, very big way, so it's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, you guys have a great trip. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. This has been episode 27 of the Down South Photo Show. Um, not sure what guys will see you in next week since we're going to be a man down, yeah. but we'll, you never yeah. know. You never know. We'll, well, we'll see. Speaking, speaking quickly before we wrap up, uh, our special guest for February that we've been talking about. Yes. I've had some further further correspondence with him. Ooh, it's getting and he's closer. Locked, he, he's locked and loaded, mate. This he's ready good. to go in February when, when he can. He's going to let us know, but he's... He? I've given okay. it away. It's a he. Ooh, Ooh okay. It's a he. It down. But uh, don't he's, forget he's the hashtag. <laughs> don't forget the hashtag, not another effing sunrise. We will see you next week or the week after on the Down South Photo Show. See you guys. See ya. Cheers.